Hey you guys, welcome back to the channel Physics Surgery and this is Pathfinder Solution Series and as was expected, this is a follow-up video to the Resolve 11 video where we resolved the idea of applying Gauss law in a dielectric and I said as a practice problem to the resolved video, I'd be taking this as an example and I have presented this problem even in that particular video. So in case you have not watched that Resolve 11 video on application of Gauss law on dielectric, the link is in the description below. So please do go and watch that. It's a very, very important and often misunderstood concept for JE advanced. Okay. So without much further do assuming that you have watched that video let me move forward with the formal wording of the question okay so this was the question presented to you it was in uh, the passage section or comprehension se section of the uh, pathfinder book in current electricity chapter okay so uh, he is talking about a parallel plate capacitor that is filled with two layers of dielectric okay so you could see that and a and b these are the dielectrics and distances of these dielectrics are d1 and d2 and the material A has dielectric constant K1 and conductivity sigma 1. This is slightly unusual. We consider most of our problems in JE advanced the dielectric to be non-conducting. So this is going to be slightly different and fun. Material B simultaneously has a dielectric constant K2 and some conductivity sigma 2. The capacitor is connected across an ideal battery of terminal voltage V. Okay, so no internal resistance here. Permittivity of free, free space is epsilon naught. Okay, he's asking two simple questions. One is electric field in the material A. Okay, so he's given four options. That means what is the electric field? Second one, total surface charge density on the interface of the di dielectric materials. That means there is an interface here. Can you see that will have a surface charge density? How much is that? And a lot of Ks, sigmas, Ds are there, right? So we'll try to decipher that. Okay. One thing that you need to understand is when you place these things inside this uh, capacitor gap, actually these values vary vary with time okay right so since the options don't have any functions of time immediately you should understand that he's talking about a steady state okay so this is a very important thing it's like an rc circuit right there is a conductivity means there is a resistivity and that means there is a resistance here for the flow of the current right so this is effectively an rc circuit but slightly different from your usual rc circuit so you should understand that this is a steady state problem okay now i'll do a video in the future where if someone asks you what is the function of time question then how to tackle with it that would be slightly more difficult but definitely doable and there are one or two questions in pathfinder which cater to that need i'll take that up okay so with this if you want to have a go just pause the video here try this passage this is very important concept for je advance and then uh, go ahead with the solution i'm going to give okay right so this is the solution so I've written that we are doing it in steady state, okay, based on the options given. And uh, here I have depicted that crude diagram uh, that has given with some color so that I can differentiate the two dielectrics. And even though there is some gap that I've shown here, they're actually touching. That's how the current actually conducts. In this steady state, what actually happens is because there is a resistance and electric field will be there, there will be flow of charges there will be free charges available. That's what conductivity talks about, okay? Right, so assuming that it is steady state, how is steady state? Then this blue color metal plates, charge should not change with time. This is a dynamic steady state. This is not a static one. Current actually flows through this, but the equal current leaves that plate, passes through the dielectrics, and again passes through the wire, and there will be a circulation of current in steady state. That means if you ask this metal plate, how are you? It will say, yeah, I am receiving some charge, but also leaving the same amount of charge. Therefore, it's not that charge is not flowing, but effectively there is no charge accumulation that is taking place at these blue metal plates. This is something that you need to understand here. So that's why you could see I have written the same current passing through every phase. So there is no I1, there is no I2, everything is I. One more important thing that you need to understand here, even though I've drawn one arrow, this current actually would be a distributed one. It would have spoiled my diagram. That's why I've written it as one arrow. It's a distribution over an area. Remember current density vector J should be a more appropriate way of representing. Not only that, for that to happen, the electric field in this particular parts should be E1, which again, I've drawn only three arrows. It's actually a distributed value of E1. Similarly, electric field in this would be a distributed value of E2 that I have drawn 
to represent uh, a different field that I am thinking. Okay, so with this picture in mind, let's go step by step analyzing how you get to the two questions that are asked. Right? Remember, the first question is finding out E1. Second question was what is the surface charge density on this interface? Keep these things in mind as we move along. So resistance of the dielectric first one d1 k1 sigma 1 that are given should how do you re define resistance in a current flow you will define it as rho l by a right resistivity is rho right or you bring rho down is it length divided by conductivity into area what is the length of the flow of current d1 area of cross section assuming this area is a i have written that similarly for this r2 would be written like this first step is done now i would assume that this current flow feels that these two resistances of the dielectric r1 and r2 are in series that's why current is same so the value of that current simple ohm's law across these dielectrics potential is v divided by r1 plus r2 and i have rearranged these terms i have got the value of current okay so keep that as step 2 in step 3 what i'll do is i'll now focus my attention on e1s and e2s okay remember ohm's law's microscopic form is j is equal to sigma e right so j equal to sigma e you should be knowing microscopic form of ohm's law this j for both these dielectrics is same remember i is same area is same so j should be same that's why i'm not written any subscript so it should be simultaneously equal to sigma 1 e1 in this dielectric and sigma 2 e2 in this dielectric and that's why your e1s and e2 are not the same even though the current is the same Okay, right. So from this, can I write E1 is equal to J divided by sigma, sigma 1, right? We are almost there for the calculation of E1. Okay, so J divided by sigma 1, J itself is current divided by area. I'll just substitute that from here. The substitution follows and you have got the first answer. The value of E1 is V into sigma 2 divided by the cross terms. Okay, D1 sigma 2 plus D2 sigma 1. So we'll search for this option in the question. Go back and I think v into sigma 2 divided by d1 sigma uh, this thing this thing would be the correct answer okay right so let's move on to the next question uh, so similarly you could have calculated for e2 right can you see that uh, i think if you are good with the uh, uh, pattern recognition uh, two change to one should give you this answer or you trust this mathematics you'll get the same thing so e2 and e1 have common denominator but in the numerator you will get sigma 1 and sigma 2 exchanged now comes the charge density question so what i have done here is this part i have taken a small gaussian cylinder to apply gauss law that was taught to you in the resolve 11 video so please again if you want to understand how to apply gauss law in uh, dielectric please go back to that resolve video link is in the description below and go through that and then come back okay so i have drawn this part zoomed here Okay, so this interface, let's say is the sigma the charge density is sigma s. Don't confuse between sigma s and sigma 1. This is conductivity. This is surface charge density. That's why subscript I have put. Okay, so the field is discontinuous and this is a very good recipe for induction of some charges. Okay, so for that I'll apply Gauss law. Okay, so let me keep that in my view. So sigma s represents the interfacial surface charge density here. Applying Gauss law, remember Gauss law is applied with charge enclosed by epsilon naught there is no need and i have proven in that resolved video that there is no need for any k to be involved in this particular uh, uh, application of gauss law okay simple e2 is the leaving flux into da da is the area that i have taken of this particular small part and e1 is the entering flux leaving is positive entering is negative so total effective flux is this should be equal to whatever charge that would be enclosed on this layer is sigma s into d area of this thing divided by epsilon naught da gets cancelled epsilon goes that side you your surface charge density is this e2 and e1 in the step 3 are known you just need to subtract and you get the answer and in the answers first one and second one you can clearly see in steady state it doesn't matter what's values of k1 and k2 hard to digest for students who are not good, good with concept but i think as you are watching these videos you are definitely good with concepts and you would be able to appreciate the answer given in the book okay so let's go back and search for that option if I am searching it correctly, right, there is only uh, this, I think, is the correct answer. Okay, so um, 
I hope you enjoyed this concept. And again, I ask you, I request you to go through that resolved video on dielectric and that should uh, ensure that your concepts are very solid and clear. Okay, so if you want to also watch the rest of the videos of Pathfinder solution series, the link has been put up in the uh, description below. It's a playlist that I've curated, right? So please make sure you go through them. And other playlists that are very important in this particular channel are Olympiad workout series, AITS select series, which we will be coming up with more and more questions. Some of the requests I have noted down in the comments. So please make sure you keep putting your requests in the comments and I will have a sequence in which I'll take up those questions and resolve series as always will keep continuing resolving your doubts which are not usually done in your textbooks okay so all the links of these playlists are in the description below please do enjoy them try to play them in loop try to understand them and if you have any doubts please do post those doubts in the comment section I'll try my best to answer each one of them okay right and in case you like all this content please do share it with others try to bring more students remember more students come to us more doubts will be asked and your doubts also will get clarified and I, I will also benefit from the subscribership okay so please do subscribe to my channel try to um, spread this channel in such a way that it uh, benefits both of us it motivates me a lot if I'm teaching to more students so please understand that and try to get that uh, uh, thing in your mind okay so uh, I hope uh, you will be there for my next video and I would love to bring it to you till then stay safe and goodbye